we have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. And first up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. I have uh, Josh Klein. Good evening. Nice to see everyone again. Good evening. Would you like me to take it away, Bill? Yep. Yeah, just give me a second here okay. to okay. enable. Okay, screen sharing is enabled. Perfect. All right, well, thank you. Thank you for having us back again, Josh Klein, um, professional engineer with Stonefield Engineering and Design. I'm here representing the applicant TBG Architecture. We are proposing a new Chase Bank as part of this, this project. So um, as the board recalls, we were here probably about a month ago, not a little bit more, and we presented a different plan um, where we were showing a a larger kind of building. Um, the building was encroaching within the setback. The development was a little bit, I guess, less to scale. We went back, we took the feedback from the board. Um, we worked closely with the property owner as well as with the Chase team and came up with a the new proposal that I'm, I'm sharing on the screen tonight. Um, it What it looks to do is kind of pull the development back from the corner. We meet all the setback requirements. Um, the goal is to kind of have it align with the parking area. Um, you can kind of see that there's a little bit of alignment here with the Trader Joe's. I can pull up the overall. You can kind of see it, it blends in a little bit better with the improvements along the front. I think the key really is that it meets the kind of the setback requirements. It also, this plan incorporates, we have the latest mass DOT plans as well as any easements and improvements. So it the plan kind of incorporates those improvements while still maintaining kind of a nice landscape area. We've in increased the existing landscape area to the top of the page and I'm circ circling while still providing kind of a new pedestrian connection to the shopping center as well as connectivity on site. So we're, you know, kind of here tonight to get some additional feedback. I know one of the comments regarding the, the fire department, we did reach out um, to the fire department and requested a meeting in the turning templates. Um, we, we did not hear back, unfortunately, before the meeting. We'll try again. Uh, we have run um, kind of industry standard, kind of some of the more larger um, fire vehicles through the site to ensure that it can circle, safely circulate. But again, the, these are all, you know, industry standard dimensions, you know, 24 foot aisles, nine by 18 foot spaces. So and everything here is, is kind of what you see, A, in the shopping center, but what you see you know, kind of in, in any commercial development, really, that you go to around the state. Where are you going to be your sewer and water hookups? Yes, yeah, so that's a great, it's a great question. Um, so there is a, an existing sewer that runs through the site. Um, you can kind of see I'm highlighting on the screen, Trader Joe's connects into it. So we would be connecting right into that existing main okay. that services the property. Um, this is the the stormwater plan, we're proposing an underground system um, in the parking area. Um, and then we're kind of creating a, a depression in the back of the site to kind of capture runoff that kind of continues around. And then everything's going to the same point it does today, which is, you know, today there's a outlet structure. I mean, sorry, a, a head wall in the bottom left-hand corner that I'm circling. And as part of the mass DOT improvements, you know, we're going to coordinate with them on kind of converting that to a the catch basin. Where's your town water hookup? So water, we've, we're working with the property owner. Um, let's see, I think the utility plan actually shows it. So we're proposing the water main is actually on the other side of Trader Joe's. So we'd be coming across, we wouldn't be impacting um, Trader Joe's at all through it. We would basically be running our water line across the front of the site. It's easier to see in the overview. Uh, but the water main is okay. up on the right-hand side of Trader Joe's. The, the only reason I asked those two questions is because mm -hmm. the DPW superintendent gave a quick look at it and asked where the connections were. Because with Route 9 being torn up and then completely repaved, if you had to go into the street, chances are the state wouldn't allow you to do anything out there. But as long as you're all going to be on site, then you're all set. Correct. Yeah, there will there will be and typically Mass DOT holds a five year moratorium for you know outside of emergency um, services. Okay. All right, so it's it definitely looks a lot improved from the last time we saw it. So, when will you be ready to apply for something? So we're 
What we're going to do is probably over the next, I would say, two weeks, we'll submit the formal application. Um, and, you know, hopefully in that time, we can even get a meeting with the fire and, and incorporate any changes. But I imagine an application will come in the next two weeks. Okay. Any other questions from anybody? Comments? Nope. Okay. Looks okay. much better. No, I appreciate that. That's good. Okay. Good to hear. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a nice evening. So I um, next had uh, Giovanni Cesar Stonefield. Is he's he set a, a date for a hearing. He's with our our office, so he's part oh, of that application. Okay. He is the last person, though that is that is with our team. So okay. everyone else is fair game. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice evening. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Joe. He, he didn't file anything, so no no hearing date. Okay. Sure. Uh, next up, we have Jake Marley. Hi, everyone. Hello. I'm presenting on um, behalf of the Joe Sikowski dual use solar project um, and a couple of proposed changes to that um, plan that was approved by the planning board back in July of last year. Um, and those changes include um, limiting the amount of workspace, shifting the inverter pad north, um, shifting one row of panels um, from the south uh, southeast corner to the northwest corner. And um, uh, that's really caused by or triggered by um, the, the erosion control and site access. Um, and so those kind of changes were brought about um, during final construction design sets and, and coming up with the final permit sets, um, which are... Uh, pretty close to being ready to be shared. So should I share screen, uh, Mr. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and show us what you, what you're doing. So this is the new um, proposed layout. Um, in the past, um, there was a row of modules down here that has been shifted to the Northwest corner. Um, the limit of work was really, um, right at the end of these panels. And so that's where the erosion control uh, uh, or, or straw wattle was proposed to be. We've proposed and this change is, uh, or modification is putting that on the north side of the um, site access road. And that road actually currently um, really extends out into the middle of the field and probably ends, dies out sort of two thirds of the way into the parcel. So there's an existing access road that really we would just have the straw waddle on the others on the north side of that existing access road rather than the southern side which is sort of right where this this, this last module of rows ends um, so hopefully this is the correct plan right so you'll see this was the plan that was originally proposed um, you see the, the modules down here in the southeast corner um, are now revised to up here in the northeast corner this line the limit of work is extending straight out um, and another uh, proposed change, the last proposed change was eliminating the access gate. It's not something that we really feel one way or the other on. Um, you know, it, it does, I, I suppose, provide some level of security. Although <clears throat> we feel if someone really wanted to get out to the site, they, they would just be able to go around it. There's not a perimeter fence. Um, aesthetically, it's just something else that's out there. Um, when I discussed it with the, the, the fire chief and police chief, um, I think the, their bigger concern was having access, you know, and, and locking and, uh, to this inverter pad, which has a fence and, and um, that will have a, a security fence and, and you know, uh, lock on it. So, um, yeah, I, I think those were really the, the high level, the, the proposed changes to the plan. Um, I'll turn it over to, to you for any questions or, or if there are any details that I might have missed. I don't see any big deal. About, yeah, I, I see no big deal. About, I don't see anything either. I'll make a motion yeah. to waive further site plan approval. Right. So is there a fence around the entire array? Or no. No, there is not. Okay. And was I wrong in thinking that there was going to be animals grazing under it or just crops? So that's a good question. Um, can, uh, can I sh stop sharing? Sure. Uh, there was early on in this, um, 
this project has taken many um, sort of progressions. Um, it was originally proposed to be chicken production. It's going to be row crop, row crop production. Um, mm -hmm. Filed a, a farm plan um, through the Department of Energy's Smart Program, and it's you know pretty prescriptive. We have a three-year plan, which includes two years of broccoli production and uh, zucchini squash. Of course, we'll reevaluate that uh, after every year and seeing how you know the, the, the crops perform. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? If not, Mr. Dwyer? I, uh, I motion to waive further site plan approval. Second. You have a motion, a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. I'm sorry, who is the second? Oh, Mike. Aye. Mr. Sarsinski. Okay. The Honorable. Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Next one uh, that checked in and doesn't seem... Oh, uh, just a uh, single name, Joy. Um, excuse me, I'm just overhearing because I'm looking to buy a, a solar array uh, in Hadley. So I'm just looking through the tunnel. How does it work? Because oh. I'm looking to expand uh, that thing after the purchase. Okay. I thought that there was like a schedule for you guys. So I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have nothing to present. And I'm I'm just like um, an investor looking into buy a property there. So. Okay. You are welcome to observe. I'm sorry we're not that entertaining. Uh, it's very entertaining. Thank you. And um, next up was Lynn Gray. Did you have anything besides the um, Chase Bank? No, I was just here for Josh's presentation. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, next in was Laura Baker, but she's here for our item on um, for the, um, the 40B. Uh, yeah. So uh, next up would be Jeff Squire. Look at that. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, so yeah, Jeff Squire, Berkshire Design Group here with a couple of quick things, hopefully. Um, first one was uh, 8 Railroad Street, which is the site of the quarters. Um, I understand that they had, we were, we were approached by uh, the owners to help them iron out or, or uh, make sure we satisfied the parking requirements due to, I guess they applied for a building permit for some internal renovations um, and were asked to stop here first to make sure that all the parking requirements were, were met, uh, particularly with regards to the outdoor seating area, I think was the, was the big question. Um, so just what I, what we put together prepared for them was just a quick plan um showing the existing building which is uh 6 000, a little over 6000 square feet uh the outdoor seating area which includes there's a little uh previous uh fenced in area that they had off the east end of the building or west end of the building um but now this square foot is the 1650 square feet also captures what they have um delineated outside in the in the gravel lot um with some picnic tables and fencing um, including that area in the calculations. So uh, per Hadley standards, the two to one, they're required at 15,318 square feet of parking on site. What is there now is, um, and some of this is, um, is going back to the previous plan that was submitted um, back when Mark Darnold still was with us um, for, I think use of this end of the, the west end of the building or east end of the building. Um, I think this was in 2012, but they had designated an area of reserve parking, existing gravel parking. They had constructed some additional gravel parking and dealt with some stormwater drainage over on the uh, east side of the site. And so this really just expands that uh, parking area that was um, what that was constructed and utilizes that same reserve area that was shown to satisfy um, the parking standards, these areas combined results in 15,524 square feet. 
So you're planning to put all that parking in? No, this is, it's what is there now is what they expect to utilize. They don't have a need for any more currently. But the, we, the, the only problem today is you don't have enough parking. There's parking on the street and they park across the street at the uh, repair shop. So I will not approve this plan unless you put in some of this parking. Okay. So I wasn't, yeah. So I wasn't aware there was an issue. They did point out that they're getting a lot, um, you know, a lot more traffic in the bike path. But if part of this requirement is to construct some of this, then I can let them know. I wasn't aware of, you know. Yeah. I, I would recommend issues. based on what I've seen, all the reserve parking be put in. Okay. Sure. Um, I mean, I, I've seen under, I mean, under busy times to their good luck, good fortune, there was a lot of cars and a lot of people and they're parking on the street and across the street. Sure. So, yeah, I can certainly inform that. I, I wasn't aware that there were parking issues. And so we, like I said, we were just approached to, yeah, develop develop some calculations. So that's what we did. <clears throat> so, but I can certainly notify them and, and let them know. They're, they they they're, it appears they're doing pretty well. So that's good for them. Great. Okay. Um, the other one that I just wanted to ask about real quick was: Do, uh, uh, do you want us any action on that one? Do I, I want any action? Yeah. yeah. What are you asking? Do you, us? Do you want to vote from us or something? I don't think so. And I, that was partially a question for you is I don't know, you know, what, what really is required other than, um, you know, uh, making sure that we get your endorsement, I guess this really isn't a site plan approval or not. I mean, there's no changes to the site. It's really ensuring that we, that the project or the site, uh, the business satisfies the parking requirements. Okay. Um, so I'm not, yeah, the, the process is a little bit, a little bit questionable in my mind. I don't know what, technically we need. I would do a motion to waive further site plan approval on the condition that all parking uh, be made available, no reserve parking. Yeah. What's the address of that, Jeff? Uh, it's 8 Railroad Street. 8 Railroad, okay. Yeah. I would second that. Okay, we have a motion to wait for the site plan approval on the condition that all the parking is constructed. Do we have a second? Yes. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> Good luck. Okay, next one. Uh, next one, real quick. Um, this is the uh, Gardner Supply Center that is um, wrapping up construction. One of the questions that the owners had not accounted for previously was the need for, a, I guess, a temporary hoop house in in times of peak, you know, uh, peak storage when they when they need to receive the most plants and and store a lot of those. So the thought was off the east side of that two was it two eighty five? I forget the address. I'm sorry. Where the uh, where the child care center used to be. Um, where we had proposed a loop drive before is now going to be lawn if it would be possible to install a, a temporary hoop house on that side of the building. Is that like a tunnel greenhouse? Is that what that's like? That's yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that and would be a, on the south true. side or east? That's east, east side. side. On the east side. Did you say temporary? Well, it's, yeah, I mean, there's no footings. It would have, you know, something that could push a cart up the center aisle with, I don't know, with the compacted gravel or um, something, but, you know, it would be, it would be landscape fabric or cloth on, you know, with, with a hoop house, I, however they construct them, but it's, um, it's not a permanent structure by any means. And I am going to check with the conservation commission as well, because it does fall within the hundred foot they waived. Um, the need for a notice of intent, but I will will notify them just just as a as a cursory. I would just check with the building inspector. I am I'm doing a tunnel greenhouse for UMass up in Deerfield, and the state building inspectors required it to be engineered, and so the engineer called for sauna tubes. I've got mm. 
it's just unbelievable amount of sauna tubes for all those tubes instead of them just being driven into the ground. So I'm not sure how the local inspector will interpret that. Sure. Okay. I'll certainly pass that on. They did mention that, you know, specifically that they were trying to avoid sauna tubes. So I don't know whether that's a sticking right. point. Any other that was it. We don't put a vote on there, Mr. Dwyer? I would think so. Uh, I, I almost think that it's a big enough issue that, well, I, I guess, it, uh, Jeff, I'm going to send you a couple of our standard disclaimer forms just to s say that waiving site plan approval is a zoning determination and not a building determination. But sure. I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval for a hoop house on the east side of the eastern building. Was that within the setback or? It would be, um, no, I mean, I, I obviously they'd have to adhere to whatever setback regulations there are. So it would have to be outside of setbacks. Okay. Second. Mm. Motion second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Great. Okay. Thank you. That's all That's I have. Okay. Right. Thank have you. Good night. Good night. Okay. Hiding behind the name Kristen tonight is Bruce Jenks. I see your lips moving, but we're not hearing anything. Your device might be. Can't hear you. Your device might be muted because you're not muted through Zoom. Can't hear you. Good thing we understand sign language. Mm -hmm. You could also call in by phone and have visual and audio. I think that's possible, isn't it? Isn't well, it? Possible? People have done that, yes. You, just if you do that, you have to turn off the, well, I guess he doesn't have a mic on his, but you wouldn't want the feedback. Or he has a mic that it's not working. <clears throat> Uh, maybe we can move on to uh, our uh, first public hearing. While you're Mr. Working. Jenks, just, just the point of information. On a, on a call this afternoon, somebody had a similar problem. They had to, they had to shut, shut the, get out of Zoom and then get back into Zoom and it worked. You may want to try that. We're not going to be, we'll, we'll be here, so we're not going anywhere. All right. Next, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, let's see. I have uh, Alexis Breitendiker. Yeah, she's with Laura Baker. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, then, uh, no, that is the end of uh, the administrative session. Want to do the public hearing? That'll be relatively quick, I think. Okay. The planning board will conduct, will conduct Zoom public hearings on Tuesday, March 7, 2023, beginning at 6.45 p.m. Purpose of the first hearing is to review for a two-year renewal of a cannabis license to operate for Section 30.4.5.7 of the Zone Bylaw for heirloom collection. The second hearing is to review for a one-year renewal of cannabis license to operate for same section of the zone bylaw for had leaf. Details for internet dial-up and for Zoom meeting will be available on the planning board agenda when, when posted, published twice in the Gazette, twice uh, February 18th and 25th. And I think Mr. Albano is ready to say something. Yes, um, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I think that uh, if there uh, were no responses to the ad, 
uh, the legal notice uh, that uh, that I think we're entitled to the the renewal, and we're here for the second two year renewal. This is uh, the heirloom collective. Okay, I sent out this notice to all town boards, and for heirloom collection, there were um, let's see, you're for Hadleaf. No, you're for no, no, the the heirloom. Yeah, heirloom. Oh, yeah, for heirloom. There were no comments. Uh, the heirloom had been paying their dues, for lack of better term, in taxes, and they had town. And there was no issues either with the payment or with uh, issues from the police and fire. And I received no comments at the official uh, planning board email address. So. Why is this to renew? A motion to renew? So I'll make a motion to renew for two years, effective uh, as of what was the renewal expiration date for the prior? Uh, I, Bill, we talked about that. I, I couldn't find it, um, but uh, if we could have it renewed effective as of the date of the application, which was, I think, uh, April, uh, not April, um, February 15th. Because I believe that our. Um, uh, our uh, past renewal expires at, uh, at the end of uh, of February. I just I, I couldn't put my hands on a, a copy of the uh, the last renewal. <clears throat> I, I couldn't find my file copy on my end either. It must not exist. Well, you February fifteenth. That's fine. Okay, I'll make a motion to renew uh, as of the date of application two fifteen twenty three. Second. That was Five Mike. That was was Mike. Me, yeah. Just for I, I believe that after this renewal, there's no more to follow. Is that correct? That is correct. That's my understanding as well. Okay. Very good. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now, do you want to type that up, Bill, or do you want me to do it? Uh, I can put something together on that one. Okay. And then I'll file it with the clerk as well. Okay. With the uh, uh, da, 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 da. had leaf, they have a requested a extension at least till the next meeting because they're working on some kind of new change to the payments payment. Something the state has recently passed, and plus they have not made any payments. But I'm not sure any payments have been due yet. But uh, they'll get back to us for the next meeting. That was okay. the next meeting they wanted, right, Bill? Two weeks? Yes, that's what they asked for. Okay. Be the 21st. We'll continue that. It's within all of the timelines, so I don't know if we even need a motion to continue. I think we need a motion. Well, let's cover our bases. Okay, I'll make a motion to continue to uh, April <clears throat> Or 321. Yeah. That's the Hadley. I would yes. second. Yeah. You have a motion? Yeah. So you, did, you second, Mark, Mark seconded. Yeah. All in favor of the continuance, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion, mm -hmm. motion is unanimous. Thank you. Passes. Um, Mr. Jinx back on. There we go. Mr. Jinx, are you ready? There's a Bruce, and he is muted through Zoom. I will ask him to unmute. I can't. No, he's unmuted. Okay. Are you there, Bruce? Speak to us. Still silent. If you're speaking, Mr. Jenks, we can't hear you again. Technology is wonderful until it isn't. <laughs> well, while we're waiting, um, at the last meeting, we talked a little bit about the housing production plan that was prepared by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. The selectmen have approved it, and we didn't approve it because we wanted to have all our members here. Mark was absent. So do we have any other comments on the housing production plan that was prepared? Looks quite good. 
quite impressive. Thank you for your work on that, Jim. So, a lot of work on Mr. Comia and his crew. Mm. They're the ones that really deserve the thanks for that one. We just kind of were overseers, if we, if you would. They did a good job. Um, if there's no comments or anything else, I'd like to have a motion to approve the plan by the planning board. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Just for the record, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock in the Senior Center, the seniors, I guess for lack of a better term, have requested the committee um, to put this plan together or report together. They want to have a presentation. So we will, we will be making a presentation tomorrow night. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be recorded by Alex or not, um, but they just want to kind of get an overview and it somehow ties into some kind of a housing plan that the seniors have been working on for something. What so, time is it, Jim? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock tomorrow. Yes. At, at the senior center. Okay. Yes, for the record, we're missing two good basketball games tonight, right, Joe? One for UMass and one for Hopkins? No, UMass got killed this afternoon. They did? Yes, by 30 points. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> well, it, anyways, Hopkins is playing in a tournament tonight. Well, where are they playing? Where's Hopkins playing? Home. Who, who are they playing? Roxbury Catholic. Are they playing at home? At yes. home. Yeah. They have, they have a better record. So. <clears throat> this whole state tournament is kind of screwed up from what we remember. So. Is it, is it on, uh, is it on uh, the... Hadley News Network. Um, Alex is going to cover it. Well, he has other report. Yeah. I don't know. He usually does. So. So just to get the clear up the underbrush here. Um, could I suggest we uh, do take up the release of Covenant on Colony Drive? Because that won't take any discussion. It won't take any detailed discussion. That's the document. Check in the mail. It's going to come out of the proceeds. Okay. Of the sale of the lot. Is that right? Is the, fi the final coke done on the road yet? As a no. We have... Uh, we have an escrow based on an estimate from Carl's plus 25%. Okay, yeah, and the drainage at the end of the street needs some help too, so. Well, that's that's because the top, be the top coat's not down, so the, uh, the, the drain is proud. Yep. So I'm not participating on this one. So we need a, both a motion and a second to release the covenant. This is the last lot. So it's a release of the covenant as it's in its entirety. So what are we making? You, you don't want to participate, Bill. You don't, correct? Uh, yes, I'm not participating in this So you one. want the motion to read, release the lot and retain? No, just release. Uh, release the covenant. Release the covenant. Release the covenant on lot. Which one? It's uh well, I forget which one it is, but it's the last one. So just it's just a, a general release of the covenant. <clears throat> okay. Oh, that I thought it had to be accepted by the town meeting. Then it was going to be released. Nope. He's he's provided an alternative form of security for it. Oh, well, what is the alternative form of security? Uh, proceeds. 30, right? It's like thirty thousand dollars or something. Okay. This, we, is on col this is on Colony Drive. This is on Colony. When we re when you released the covenant on the next to last lot, that was based. That's actually he substituted um, the um, he substituted cash for the covenant. 
You, you said the sixty six thousand was coming out of the proceeds of the sale. Is that that's coming right? out of the proceeds of the is, sale of this is, lot, which is I that think in, is that in writing. I believe it's number five. But is that in writing, or is it just a handshake? Uh, I'll be getting the check and delivering it to the treasurer. Oh, okay. So I I will make a motion. What if, what if he walks away from everything now and it's not presented to the town meeting? Oh, we already have that. Uh, we have that piece. We have his uh, proposed deed. Yeah, this this is one of the, this is one of the subdivisions that falls under the new subdivision rules, Joe. So he had to agree as part of the application process to submit it to town meeting. Right. I thought the last lot was not released until it was accepted by the town. Or cash surety. No, no, we never set it up that way because the way this the way the underlying statute reads. Once the work is done, we have to release the covenant. No, no, I, I, I respectfully disagree. That was the whole argument about redoing the subdivision regulations about that particular point. That was one of them. That we can do that. But I could be wrong. I don't think so. Well, if he's put up cash surety, Right, he's putting up a, a bond he, bill. He has, he has filed cat. He has paid cash from a pr the prior transaction based on the estimate from Carl's. Okay, so we have a form of security. Is that correct? Yes, your sub. So actually, yes, you're releasing the the lot from the covenant, but you do have alternate security in the form of a cash deposit. I don't remember exactly what it is. Um, I can dig that out and send it around. But there is a cash deposit that was on for the release of the next to last lot. Okay, that was, then, I thought that was what it was with. They could either it could be one or the other, Mister Zagodnik. As long as we have the money or a or the lot, we should have enough. Okay. Okay. I will make a motion to release the last lot on Colony Drive in exchange of a, a deposit of cash, retaining a cash covenant to cover the last work to be done. Second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. abstain. And Mr. Dwyer abstains. Motion passes 401 abstention. You want me to write that up, Bill, or how do you want to do that? Uh, I'll, uh, I, I'll, I'll write up the uh, release and uh, bring it around to Joe probably for signature. Okay. All right. KLQCR. <clears throat> I have no idea what that means. Ed Spruce, can you hear me? Yes. Holy cow. I'm not sure why it's echoing like that. Holy so yeah, you're, you're getting feedback. You might want to turn off one of your speakers or something. Oh, turn off this computer. Is that better? Okay. Mr. Jinx, you were up. What's that? You're on. I turn this up. Sorry, I can barely hear you now. Only you have the floor. Three, only takes three computers to get it figured out. <laughs> I'm just here to um, renew the entertainment license or review it again or whatever the process is. I don't know if you can hear me still. Yes, yes we can hear you. Okay. Sorry, I can, I can barely hear you guys, so... Remind me of remind us of the address. One zero two Mill Valley Road. So I did send you an email request requesting a few things that you sign the disclaimer so you know what our approval is and isn't. Uh, I did ask that you would uh, just self-certify that you are, you satisfy the agricultural exemption 
of chapter 40A, section three. And uh, I had asked that you would uh, show where you're going to do your parking and just tell us what it is, <laughs> what your entertainment is going to be like. Okay. The, the, <clears throat> the letter I got from you said you went from on-street parking. We never parked on the street. We had parking for our store in the regular parking lot. And then we extended uh, a grass section last year to park 60 cars over there. And we have parking on both sides of the road at 102, 103. And that'll be the same setup uh, this summer. As a matter of fact, there's not gonna be corn in that field anymore. So we actually have a larger area for off, um, off street parking and um, grass parking for the, for the scoop season. Well, so what kind of entertainment will you be having? conducting same as last year um speakers tours music that type of thing there could be there could be a surprise pop-up brass band that comes out like last year from some camp occasionally that happens um it happened during covid we allowed the umass band camps to come out and use the stage um <clears throat> so occasionally children will come down there and play so, so that, that's unannounced usually to us is, is that every weekend you typically have something? Yeah. Oh, God. Yep. Okay. And you are in the APR, correct? What's that? Your land is APR? It is not. It is not APR. As far as I know, it's not. The part that the parts that we have leased are not. Okay. You'd have to ask Gordon Smith on the APR land. Okay. All right. Do we have a plan? Do we have a plan in front of us, or is just a, a verbal commitment of the, of the parking? It, it, yeah, usually people come in and say where they're going to be parking, how many cars there are going to be available, it's, and uh, the drainage, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, I'm a, it I'm sounds like it's going to be more than just a summer event, correct? What do you mean? Uh, how often are are the 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 bands going to play? Only on uh, the weekends, we, we, every week, or we have music on weekends typically. Um, occasionally, there's music on a Monday if it falls on a Labor Day or a um, a holiday weekend. And I think there might be three or four of those. And this will be this will begin when? Say it again. When will this start? Our season typically starts in May, depending upon the weather. I don't have a specific date. We're really kind of bound by weather. We have exterior plumbing on that building. Um, so the cold water comes into the back. It's like a trailer. You know, we blow the water out. So it's really dependent on, on what Mother Nature serves us. Okay. We were kind of surprised by the. And you run into the fall? Say that again? You run until the fall sometime? That's right. Yep. Yep. So last year we had some confusion about the hours. The first time you came in, you told us when you wanted to have your performances and we said, okay. And then um, you exceeded those. I think, it just ex I think it just exceeded it on that one, um, the one day that the kids were here playing that we presented back in front of you on a second time. So what hours are you looking for for your entertainment? We're currently open from 11.30 to dusk, which is typically 8.30, 9 o'clock. We usually will have music um, Fridays because it's a work day from 5.30 to 8. But that could that usually will draft a little bit as the summer goes on and it gets, later, uh, gets lighter later than we close the scoop shop at 8.30. But the music usually stops by 8. And on Saturdays and Sundays last year, it was typically 2 o'clock. To six o'clock, we did have a couple of people play from four to seven, but it's we're not a late night. And, and when you say bands, it's literally you know two or three guys with guitars playing. I think we had one what I would call a band last year. They brought a drum, so it was like four guys, um, but it was a bluegrass kind of thing. So, it, will there be food? You have a now. You've got your ice cream like ice cream stand too, correct? Correct. And do you serve any food out of that or how does that work? We serve ice cream out of the ice cream stand. Will you have any, and there won't be any food served? Well, that, that I guess is in question. We had a food truck last year that um, 
seems to be the issue um, at odds when I watched the meeting with Denise um, Barstow. <clears throat> The, so we don't we don't know at this point what the what the parameters are with regard to the food truck. Um, <coughs> so the, he has gone to the um, the gentleman who owns the food truck went to the board of health to submit paperwork and they asked him uh, to submit some more paperwork which he has done. So I think that um, I think that that's yeah. that's so all up in the air at this point. You may want to stay on the call because we are going to be talking about. Uh, zoning language that would enable the use of food trucks. Uh, yeah, I think that, I think, honestly, I think the problem last year, the gist we are getting is that there was some miscommunication between the board of health and the planning board and as to what was allowed. Uh, the food truck that was on site last year was approved by the board of health, was inspected by the, by the fire department, um, so he was off and running. And then it seems that this year when he went to submit his paperwork, um, he was approached in the hallway by the assistant to the building inspector and gone up one side and down the other about how he won't be allowed this year, how he never should have been allowed there, how he needs a bathroom in his truck, all kinds of stuff that really, um, it, it, it didn't make sense to me. Didn't seem well, that that was the position it, of, of her, it, it, of her job. Unfortunately, the prior board of health um, was very good at some aspects of public health, namely COVID things, stuff like that. But the board of health encompasses a much more uh, issue than just addressing some things about the public health of diseases and stuff like that. And they have restaurants and septic and all these other things. And a lot of those other issues, the prior board of health wasn't super familiar with, and they didn't yeah. realize some of the things they were responsible for. They now have a uh, part-time inspector that is very familiar with a lot of the routine inspections requirements for the board of health regarding those topics. And so they are and will be enforcing and are enforcing things that may not have been rigorously or properly enforced um, in the last few years. Yeah, that, that, so, that's, abs that's absolutely fine. It, it wasn't the board of health that, that he was um, berated by. It was actually um, the assistant to the building inspector or, or zoning enforcement officer, whoever whatever the title may be. Oh. So, so yeah. I, I told him if there's any more paperwork to be submitted, I'll happily submit it for him um, so that he doesn't have to go. And yeah. he, he, so, he barely speaks legible English. So, it's, so it's, the, the, and the other thing about food trucks is that the zoning bylaw does not permit food trucks in a town of Hadley currently. They're not allowed for anything like what you have been using it for. Um, the way the planning, the way the zoning bylaws are written in Hadley is that it was what we call an exclusionary manner. It tells you what's permitted. If it doesn't say it's permitted, it is therefore prohibited. And that has been held up by court cases where the planning board in Hadley has prevailed. So the ha planning board in Hadley is trying to construct some zone bylaw amendments that will permit food trucks under proper conditions and circumstances and inspections. So it's not like Hadley, Hadley currently doesn't, doesn't allow them. So we're working on trying to permit them. And that's what Mr. Dwyer was talking about. We're gonna be talking about further on in the meeting. Yeah, I, th I, th I think that that's a good idea. Clearly all, all communities are accepting food trucks, but to say you haven't accepted a food truck, there's been a food truck in Hadley since 2003. It operates on um, as a scoop, as an ice cream facility now. Um, well, I think what you're pointing out is th creamy that delights. You, you're uh, describing an enforcement issue. Yeah. Uh, well, no, you said the, you said there were no food trucks in, in Hadley. I didn't say there truck. was any food trucks. I says they weren't. They're not permitted. None permitted. And the fact that it was operating when it was not permitted to operate is an enforcement issue. It, yeah. It's it. It is not allowed. So yeah, we're happy to, this is something you, you 
We're happy to have you point these out. Um, and it'll be a list of people who will be getting a knock on their door. Well, I, I'm saying we, we've operated a food truck in, in Hadley as well at certain events, whether it be at the Young Men's Club, whether it be at the high school, whether it be on the town common. We've done that in Hadley for, God, I don't know, eight or nine years. Um, it, well, exactly. What you're, again, it's, it's an enforcement issue. It's a bandwidth issue. Uh, this has been sort of under the radar for a while but no longer. Uh, we have more capacity to enforce and more interest in seeing to enforcement. So um, basically these have not been complying with zoning, but it was a low key enough that it didn't, uh, as I said, it flew under the radar, but uh, now it's on the radar and it will be applied across the board. So uh, if you want to give the zoning enforcement officer a list of what you consider to be other unpermitted, um, I, I don't, I, that, that's, we'll, that, he'll, he'll happily accept it and work off of it. Yeah. That, that's not my, my interest isn't in, in throwing other people under the bus. My interest is in allowing either what's good for one, good for all, or what's good for none, good That's for none. That's what we're trying to do. That's yeah. why we're and, trying and, to- And to be honest with you, um, the, the truck um, that we had on our, at our yard um, couldn't have been cleaner, couldn't have been neater, and couldn't have been more um, safe and secure with regard to um, fire suppression, uh, fire extinguishers, everything that was required because we went through it to make sure our insurance would allow them to operate on our, on, you know, on, on the property that we lease. So that was that was part of the you know part of our our extensive uh, research as well. And and how do you define a food truck? I guess is um, another thing that that you're going to have to look at. You know, does it have an ancillary system? Is there a need for an ancillary system? Like there's a hot dog cart right that the that the town uses, the booster club uses propane, but you know, does it need a vent? Does it need a hood? You know, it's it's a difficult thing now to navigate based on what types of food trucks and what types of certification um, I think that the, that the, either the planning board or the board of health is going to require like our ice cream truck has nothing, um, nothing flammable in it. Um, you know, so there's no need at most venues that we go to for even a fire extinguisher. We bring one anyway in our truck just because it's a, you know, it's a 1973 Grumman and I'm more afraid the truck is going to burn up than the, <laughs> than the freezers that are in it. Um, you know, so I guess that's, you know, that's part of the problem. Like when a beer truck comes to our facility, it, it's literally a small truck with a CO2 that pumps a keg out. Um, you know, it, it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of a hit or miss as to what, um, what needs to be regulated, I guess, for the fire department and what doesn't. So I don't know. Now, like on, that, on your, that, you're you're going to operate because from May to the fall. When is the fall? Like September, October? Yeah, last year we were open actually into October just because the weather permitted. Okay, no, that's, I just want to put down, a, okay. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, does, does anyone know the uh, regulations? If the land is uh, APR, uh, what does APR allow? Is that according to each individual contract that the owner signed with the, with the state or is something like this permitted? You said he's not in the APR. I, I could check to be sure, though, for you. I know yeah. I know a portion of Gordon's land was <clears> APR, <throat> but I don't believe it was there. Most of that was, um, I think, that bird area, bird sanctuary type stuff. But um, I can check for you. We we um, we lease a portion of the farm. We lease pastures. We lease barns. We lease um, feedlot areas. Um, the part where the scoop shop and the store are um, were former. There was a former barn there with a silo on it. I don't know if you, Joe might remember that, but I, I don't know if, I don't know if anybody mm -hmm. else does. Um, that, that barn originally was actually, uh, the, the milk room that we're using was originally used for uh, raw milk and ice cream, which oddly enough is what um, we use it for as well. So it's kind of bringing back the, um, what it was used for back in the 50s. So you're at 102 Mill Valley, you said? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So just to keep things 
contained. I'll make a motion to recommend to the select board approval of the entertainment license, uh, parking uh, up to 60 cars off street, um, we, speakers, just tours, a, we, music. The, the, sorry to interrupt, but the, the section where we have mode holds at least 60 cars, our regular parking lot. Um, the parking lot on uh, the 102 side and the 103 side are probably good for another 50 to 60 to 80 cars. We re we rarely use the uh, lawn section unless it's um, a Saturday afternoon. Okay. Well, then we'll talk about just park uh, parking completely off street. Yeah. Yeah. We had that last year, too. Types of entertainment, speakers, tours, music every weekend and some other days. Uh yeah. Beginning in May, hours from 11.30 to 8.30. Yep. I would second that. The motion and the second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. You want to write up that stuff, Joe? Bill, or you want me to write it up? Uh. If you could do that one, uh, well, just 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 write down what you just said because I didn't yeah. get a chance to copy it all down. Just email <laughs> to me, and I'll write it up. Okay, or I'll or I'll do it. Just uh, yeah, just have to make some notes here. What I have to you should have your cat there to help you, Bill. Uh, no, it's probably better to not have the cat here. <laughs> when I'm flipping pages so attractively. Okay, uh, I'll 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 write up something. I'll email something to um, um, town hall. Okay, with a copy to you, Jim. Okay. Um, All right. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, guys. Do you want me to hang around for the food truck thing? I'm I'm happy to help. I, if, um, if you want to, we're yeah, you're welcome to. Yeah, we, we've worked with um, food trucks now for, God, going on 12 years um, all over New England. So um, I was going to talk about the, the fees, too, from the other towns and how they structure, um, because we have all that information for events that we're doing this summer. For example, Amherst, Northampton, South Deerfield, Greenfield, um, how their fee structures are done and that type of thing, if that helps. So I think we just have to decide which route we're going to go down, because both... Um the town media articles and the uh, friendly 40 B could both run a little, little while. So what's your pleasure, sir? Uh, Are you asking me? Uh, no, I'm asking Jim. He's oh. here. <laughs> I was going to say whatever you, whatever I'm you want. Fly, rough draft. I'm looking for where I had the, uh, All right. Uh, I'm in general bylaw 220. No, that's not it. Okay. I'm in the general bylaw section 3.1 by adding the word unrelated to the residential section. I went back. I know, Mr. Dwyer, we always thought we had unrelated in there. I went back to a 1985 copy of the bylaw that I have, and the word unrelated is not in there. Yep. So we may have thought it was in there, but nobody has given me anything that says it was. So I'm proposing that we amend the bylaw to add that word in there. I still think it's not going to get us anywhere because of the way the first part of the bylaws is, is the renting of rooms and providing a board, whether to related or unrelated people, yeah. I think is different than renting a house to a group. Four unrelated persons. I know that 
the building inspector has requested we put that in there because it would make some of his enforcement stuff a bit more clear. Is that correct, Mr. Quinlan? Yes, sir, but if we're working on the, um, eventually if we're gonna work on a, a register for the apartments, we'll probably include different, you know, that as, long, as well as other things in that. But that would help now, because that's what right. everybody was in the assumption, you know, that would can be enforced at that point. I don't know what you're enforcing. I know Amherst has an unrelated housemates bylaw. I don't see this as an unrelated housemates bylaw. I I see it as I I have had rental properties in the past and I have clients who have rental properties. When I do a lease, it is for a property. Uh 390 River Drive, 399 River Drive. It may have be to four people, it may be to six people, but it is of a property, not of rooms, and I don't go out to cook breakfast for them. So I don't think renting a house to multiple people on a long-term basis it is in the same category as providing room and board renting of rooms, furnishing board to unrelated people. And, you know, I don't ask for marriage licenses or uh, uh, I, I just think this by itself isn't going to get, get us anywhere. Um, and I, I'm not sure, I, I haven't taken a look at what the Amherst one how, how the Amherst one reads for the unrelated housemates. But, um, you know, I, I also think, you know, what's the difference? What, what What's the objective? Uh, if we have, uh, I, I can probably, we, we can all probably call up, uh, we probably know who I am talking about when I say, uh, a family of uh, two parents and 10 kids. That's 12 people in the house. Yes, they're related. But what is what is the impact we are? Wh what are we trying to do here? I mean, what's different about having six unrelated people versus 12 related people in the house? I guess it's based on bedrooms. I know, you know. Well, you can still the, the, correct the the uh, three, complaint three is sister, three of my sisters slept in the same bedroom. Right. Right. But the students. It, 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 the rumor is, or not rumor, it happens is Sunderland and Amherst do not allow more than four unrelated. So that's why I'm I, just trying to help with the complaints I get as far as okay. how many students are are coming in Hadley because the. People leasing the places are saying that you can only have four unrelated in Sunderland and Amherst, whereas Hadley, you can do as many as you want to stuff in there. So it probably needs to go beyond this, but we do need to work on it in, with the bylaw committee. Okay. I, I, I'm just, I, I, I'm not speaking to the merits of whether having an unrelated housemates bylaw would be good or not. I'm just thinking that this isn't going to do it. Um, because I would tell my clients that as long as they are renting an entire property and not renting rooms, that it doesn't apply. See, I know Amherst and Sunderland enforce it, the four unrelated. If that was what the if that was what this said. Correct. I know. I don't think mean, that's what it says. Too vague, right? No, we need to work on it separately. Yeah. I, you know, I understand. Yeah, I, I've got to say that one's not ready for. By itself, I, it. I don't think it is going to make your life any easier. Um, it won't be me because I can't take cases against the town, but if you try to enforce on the basis of that bylaw, um, I think you're going to get a lot of pushback. And, um, you know, I, I would, if, 
if that was how the bylaw read in another town and I was advising a client, I would tell them it just doesn't apply. So ignore it. Okay. So is the rest of the board in favor that we don't want to put this one forward? It kind of sounds, sounds like we have to do a little bit more homework. That's fine. I just, that's why we're here to review these. Okay. That's fine. We'll scrap that one. Okay. Um, next one would be the private event venue. Where that is somebody who is basically renting out their property for sizable events like you know, weddings and get togethers and reunions and whatever else, some kind of party events. So you said that's for renting out. It's not if you throw your own event at your own home. What is that? I thought I heard you say if someone's renting their property out for an event. So it, it would this apply to someone having their own family event. The you're allowed to have. Let me re, let me get to the bylaw. Private event venue. You could have two. You could have two events of a year, um, for, and be exempt from the bylaw. Okay. So family or otherwise. Let's say, I wanted to rent my property out for, you know whatever, one or two events a year, you would be exempt. But if you start having more than two of e two in a 12 month period, you would need to comply with this section of the bylaw. We're not trying to prevent people from having a family reunion or a, you know, your son or daughter gets married or brother or sister or relative, something like that. Or a planning board member. <laughs> Uh, I guess that would be that would be qualified too. Doesn't yeah. have to be a relative. We want to bring that one forward. Are we addressing something that has been a perpetual problem, or are we just kind of doing something that we think should be in the bylaws? A little bit of both. It, uh, it 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 also brings some of these event some of these are intended to bring items or issues to the forefront because some of these things possibly might uh, be getting through the cracks and have a problem and not be caught until after the fact. If the board doesn't want to bring it forward, that's fine. But um, I, this is one I think I'd like to, maybe I, I can help jump in and help a bit. I'd like to develop this one a bit more. Okay. That's I fine. think I, I think it could be something that would be useful to have. Yeah, I think we only talked about it really once, maybe a a little bit more than that, but it'd be nice to really go over it more thoroughly. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh. The building inspector has requested also that we amend a Section 220-4 of the general bylaw to read as follows. Stretch code section 220-4B. The stretch code is, it's the stretch, yeah. The stretch code is enforceable by the building inspector, by the inspector of buildings or building commissioner and is effective as of the date of adoption of July one. 
2021 and C, must comply to the most current version of the Massachusetts State Stretch Energy Code should be as amended. Is that something that we recommend to town meeting them? Does the town council recommend this? If it's so a build, again, this is one the building inspector has requested um, because this, we, the town has adopted the stretch energy code. Is that right, Tom? Yes. And he's requesting that we amend the bylaw so that he makes it, it makes it a bit easier for him to enforce. Oh, okay, so it, it's, it is already adopted. Yeah, it's already in there. It just kind of refines the words a little bit. Yep. We've already adopted the stretch energy code. Yeah. This is not only the zoning bylaws, but the general bylaws as well. As Pardon? This, this would be only in the general bylaw. This is only the general bylaw. Okay. So, that's, so we don't even have to make a recommendation, but we're happy yeah. to work on getting the wording done and sort of, but you, okay. you'll be speaking to it, Tom, I'm assuming. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So it's just because it is a change. I think this is coming out of the bylaw committee you're working with, Jim, right? That is correct, yeah. Okay. Uh, no objection. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I would definitely support uh, straightening out our bylaws to be in agreement but if that's not in the zoning, that's in the general, then. I guess that's not our purview. Um, let me see. Then we have food trucks. This will be a general bylaw. It's defining Food trucks, um, okay, this is taken from, I've got which town I got this from, I think it was, we got that, was that what suburb we, we pulled this one was from? Yes, I believe so. Okay. I sent this around prior, um, but it defined a go kind of go over a few. I'm not sure it's 100% ready. Uh, hopefully, it, it's it's close. It defines a food vendor, food truck. It means any mobile operation that stores, prepares, packages, serves, sells, or otherwise provides for human consumption any prepared or packaged foods or beverages, including alcohol from a truck or cart, including ice cream and non-ice cream food and beverage products. That is how a food truck is defined. So what's the difference between a French fry later served at the uh, Young Men's Club versus the traditional food truck. Are those both included in the proposed bylaw? And the dig dong cart too, I guess it would. And the, the ice cream stand up uh, off of Lawrence Plain, that's a mobile. The, the, ice, cream, the ice cream truck on Lawrence Plain Road is indeed a mobile food truck. Yeah. Isn't that a trailer? It, yes. I don't think it has an engine. It's not self. It know. doesn't have to have an engine. Okay. Can be a tow behind. Okay. That'd be a shame. That thing's been there for 25 years. <laughs> 2003. Yeah. It says mobile operation. So if it can be moved, okay. it falls under this bylaw. So I came across something I had in, in my file for, for uh, this annual town meeting. It was the regulations from Wellfleet. Uh, Ken, was that something you provided to us? Food truck regulations from Wellfleet? 
Yeah, I think that was a, a general bylaw approach um, and more so regulations for a process to permit one. Um, I don't think it necessarily provided the standards, um, but there were a protocol and process for the for the town to permit those food trucks. I do recall sharing that with the board. Has anyone talked with Susan Malone from Amherst? Who's she? Susan Malone is the director of the Board of Health in Am Amherst, and she um, regulates the town of Amherst food trucks and those um, sidewalk vendors. I don't know if you're familiar with there's one on the sidewalk. <clears throat> Amherst has been pretty progressive with regard to food trucks because of the food trucks that are on campuses at UMass and Amherst College. I'm just saying she, she may be a good resource as to um, what defines a, a food truck. It's difficult because when you start defining a food truck, then you start defining safe, safety and security for the food truck. So in other words, you're going to, you can't compare an ice cream truck like our ice cream truck isn't the same as creamy delights. Creamy delights is able to cook hot dogs and hamburgers inside their trailer. Our ice cream truck only serves frozen ice cream. We don't have the ability, nor do we want the ability to be able to cook inside the truck. Cause if we cook inside the truck, then we're required to have an Ansel system. We're required to have two different fire extinguishers, a class K and an ABC. The K is for grease fires. Um, it goes into a whole different realm of inspection. So right. I think there, I think Amherst is pretty good about having classes of um, food operation. If, if you have an Ansel system, if you're, if you're using a live fire in the truck, whether it be propane, or grill, or like Doc said, the, the French fries, um, the ancillary system has to cover that entire area. And without that, you don't have the ability to extinguish a fire should there be one. That, that fire explosion that was in Philadelphia <clears throat> was actually caused by, U-Haul uh, was responsible for that because they overfilled two 70-year-old propane tanks for that particular truck. Now that truck wasn't inspected either, which would have been helpful, but um that was the cause of that and they ended up paying the um the lawsuits on that so i understand the the difficulty in trying to navigate the food truck business when we do um when we go out of out of state it's different for our ice cream truck when we go to boston there's 98 food trucks operating every day in the in boston um, much different requirements for each truck. So, but it's the coming way. There's, I mean, it's a $1.5 billion industry. There's 40,000 trucks. So um, it's certainly a nice way to be able to um, bring the community to an event. You know, have a mobile and, kitchen. You know, this, this is good information because we're trying to put something together and we're kind of looking at the other bylaws in other towns. So that's, that's, Thank yeah. you. That's good. That's good. Good information. Yeah. Do they food trucks pay meals tax? Do they record what they serve? And yeah, if they're, if they're, now the we do because 99% um, of transactions are done via square um, credit card. So that's all that's all done. Most of the most of the time. Do you return the uh, are you like if you go to five guys, you know, they you see the sales tax and the yeah. town gets a percentage Same. of it. Now, do these food trucks contribute to the town? Because they contribute to the town and they, pay the, and they would, pay the fee to be in the town. It would seem a little city. unfair in that if you parked out in front of uh, Antonio's Pizza and served uh, Roberto's Pizza <laughs> without paying uh, a food tax, it would be a little unfair for Antonio. So, yeah, it, it's, you know. How does that work? The, or does it work? I don't, I don't know that that's, that that's happened. Um, I, I don't, again, I guess you'd have to, you'd have to check with, with Susan, like what Susan Malone does in, in the town of Amherst. When we, when we go there, when we go to the town of, when we go to Northampton, like we do the, the family 4th of July, we scoop in Northampton. Right. And then we go do some things in look park and we do those. Um, you pay a, you pay a fee initially to get your permit from the town, from the board of health. And then each time you go back into that town, you're operating off the same permit. 
you're not charged, you know, $150 every time you every time you go in. The town of Hadley has raised their rate to $200. So, for example, when we go to do, let's say we do something at the club, I don't know, country in the country, like we did last year, there's a $200 fee to go in and do that. So before you do anything, you have to make your $200, you know, that you've paid to the town. Whether you make that or not is kind of up to you, but that's the gamble you take, you know. So the 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 two hundred dollars is the highest fee in, in in Massachusetts. You mentioned bar, bar you none. Men, you mentioned Philadelphia. I've had some of my greatest experience with food trucks when I was a student at the University of Pennsylvania eating Philly steak sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, I mean the food food trucks what? are. I love been, them. I love yeah, they've been around forever and they're efficient. And they, uh, you know, for a place like us, right, we're a seasonal business. We don't have a plumbing to to put a kitchen in. Um, We lease the land. So, you know, to build a kitchen, to put in a, um, you know, all the stuff you need to do that doesn't make doesn't make a bit of sense. Um, But what the food trucks allow us to do is all of the food that's served out of the food truck is all the food with the exception of limes, avocados, that type of thing are purchased through our store. So they're either raised on our farm or they get like, we use Reed's chicken from um, Sunderland, right? So all that chicken that's coming out of that truck is purchased locally. So it's a nice opportunity for the people that are there to try the food cooked and then to purchase it through the store. And that's really the connection that we made um, with the Durango um, taco truck. We wanted something that was, um, you know, not barbecue, um, you know, that time we wanted something, we wanted to bring in a um, sort of a Latino experience and allow people to, um, um, you know, get a little bit of a different, a different flair. We didn't want to compete with um, Burger King and uh, Taco Bell and everybody else that's on our, on our corner. So um, we're in a much different situation. Um, But that truck does have a full ancillary system and and everything that was required by our insurance company to have them sitting there uh, because we need, you know, we have to have, um, the Smiths covered as an additional insured as well. So we go through a little bit of a different rigmarole than, um, than just wheeling into the young men's club with your, um, you know, with your French fry truck or whatever, um, you know, and doing it that way. So it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a nicer experience, I think for the folks who are coming out. I don't know if you ever ate off that truck, but it's outstanding. So Jim, I do think that even if this is though this is a general bylaw, we're also going to have to amend uh, the table of uses in the zoning bylaw to allow the existence of food trucks. Oh, okay. You're right. Hey guys, this is uh, Ben from Health. Uh, just a quick question: We're considering right now that the board is or the uh, planning board is considering simply the definition of how you define food truck right now, currently, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, what I would uh, uh, suggest is it sounds like the definition that you provided is pretty um, expansive. Um, so the idea would be to cover anything that would be, um, you know, is, so you don't miss something. But how you would treat each one, of course, would have to uh, determine, it would be determined by well, as you guys were talking about the, the type of truck it is. So it might be a food truck, but one that would require require an Ansel system, for example, uh, obviously wouldn't have the same uh, considerations that one, but one that does one that doesn't would have different considerations. Let's put it that way. Um, but they would all be captured as under the, um, uh, under the definition of, of what a food truck is. I do think it would. Uh, it's better to have it more expansive than less expansive because you could run into a situation where somebody uh, is just you know fits doesn't fit anywhere in what you then decide to you know however you would decide to regulate it. They wouldn't fit under that because they're not under that definition. Just a quick that would be one suggestion I would have just because I know that's been a concern where I've worked uh, elsewhere previously. And the last thing, as far as the other businesses are, are concerned, uh, the planning board would want to put make sure that any regs that get passed in the in the town uh, gets their approval, so uh, or your approval. So you know, if for example there's a there's a pizza shop, you know, any spot that's allowed um, should be approved by planning and zoning first before a uh, food license, for example, is issued. Uh, and so you'd want to make sure that the, that the uh, truck is A, falls under the definition you have, and then B, you get to decide 
whether it is an impediment to uh, existing businesses or you know some type of a of an issue with an existing business. Uh, just a couple, just a few thoughts that uh, that uh, came to mind while you guys were talking. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. I, I, I think what you'll also find is um, you'll find some people who aren't in a truck cooking. Um, when we go to do festivals, there are some farms that set up, like when we do Green River Fest, I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's in Greenfield um, at the fairgrounds. It used to be at uh, Greenfield Community College. Um, Simple Gifts Farm, for example, would go and set up a tent and, and rent grills from U-Haul or wherever, and they would cook burgers um, and, and cheeseburgers and dogs and things like that and serve them, um, you know, serve them as part of the food court or food options. Um, so I don't know if you have to cover something with an open, open flame under a tent as far as being a food. It's, it's a mobile food unit because they're not doing it in their, in their own facility. Um, you know, just something to, to think about, I suppose. That happens at the uh, Asparagus Fest too. There's an awful lot of cooking out there. Um, we, we, we not necessarily out of a truck. For sure on this one. What's that? We have some homework, further homework to yeah. do on this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we're regulated at one festival that we do. that The truck doesn't come inside the festival, um, but we are allowed inside the festival with a tent and freezers. So the truck can come in, can supply the freezers, and then the truck has to go out. I believe that's so that um, there's not trucks on site, which is an odd thing. But most of the food trucks are unloading um, their grills and cooking out under under tents, which seems to be the weirdest thing to me. But for whatever reason, they don't want the trucks inside. It's kind of a kind of so an how odd. many food trucks are, are is it estimated are in town now? In in Hadley? Yeah. Yeah. That are situated? Yeah. Uh, only one that I know of. Plus the one up on Lawrence Plain. Yeah. That's a food truck. Yeah. We had a food truck last summer uh, um, on site. So that would be two, I suppose. And then when we do events, um, whether it be country in the country at the club, whether it be something for the high school, whether it be um, asparagus fest or whatever, then there's more food trucks in town when those happen. My, My feeling is that this is almost a health department issue. People have food trucks. If you're going to shut yours down, you got to shut every other one, the other two down in town. Uh, well, so that's an interesting question, whether it, we, this needs to be a general bylaw or whether once they are authorized as a permitted use, yeah. can it be handled just as Board of Health regulations? Yeah. Every every town that we go into outside of Hadley to participate in a festival or whether it be a sporting event um, or whatever they're having us farm aid we've done, um, we are applied through the Board of Health. We, we never have, a, have a, a, a review other than the Board of Health. The fire department is on site the day of the event inspecting trucks and fire extinguishers and ancillary systems and that type of thing in every um, every venue that we sit in. But it's all done through the Board of Health. We apply online, uh, we pay a fee to the Board of Health. The Board of Health typically comes out and uh, th- for us, they will temp our freezers. Um, you know, Some may ask if we have a fire extinguisher in the truck, but not many because we're not cooking anything. And the majority of our stuff is now packaged. Um, we do ice cream sandwiches rather than scooping since COVID. That kind of changed the changed the game for us. Um, we now offer prepared ice cream sandwiches that are individually packaged so that nobody's touching anything. Um, and it's just a better system for us. And it's a better system with us in every board of health because everything is, uh, there's nothing being exposed. We're not using, um, you know, scoops and um, gloves and that type of thing. But that's just us in, in particular, but it is all done through boards of health. <clears throat> so then in yeah. other communities you've worked in Ben um have been, how how has it been authorized board of health regs or general regs town had their own definition in addition to the health department health department in town usually matched up if not the exact same definition it would be you know, very very similar the town did control it outside of just health but that was more for uh 
not te- temporary events, uh, which I don't know if uh, the other gentleman is talking more about temporary events. Uh, the, uh, the other departments wouldn't get involved in that as much because they would be permitting the temporary event itself, which would include the food trucks. But if you're talking about just food trucks in the town or you know in the city where I, where I previously worked, all departments would be involved in the permitting of a spot. Um, uh, it would be, you know, uh, in- including, for example, traffic and parking. Um, they'd be involved. Planning would be involved. Building would be involved because depending on where they are, if they're up on along the side of a building or something like that. There could be issues that there could be uh, building code violations. So they would at least have to take a quick look at it. Pretty much all departments would have to be involved before a site is approved for a uh, food truck. And there'd be many considerations, even down to trash and waste and uh, you know, in, as we, I said previously, impact to other businesses. There are rules about how many yards it can be away from another food establishment, for example. Um, uh, you know, hours. All these things were set by different departments that weren't necessarily health. Um, but that, again, is about a truck that is known to and permitted to be in the town, not a temporary event. A tempor- temporary event is treated differently. So, Ken, do you think... If we adopted, if we amended our table of uses to allow food trucks and amended our definitions to define food trucks, that's probably all we have to do on a zoning end, right? I I think if the board didn't want to have any other responsibility um, with regards to the siding of a food truck. I think if the town adopted the use in whatever district and allowed for them in whatever district um, and just put yes, rather than a site plan review or a special permit, I would, I'm trying to think of your other uses that you have in your table. If there's any of those, if you have something treated similarly where you have a use, but you don't necessarily oversee any permitting of that use, you allow for it in town, but it may be covered elsewhere in your uh, general bylaw. Um, I feel like those types of uses exist in in zoning bylaws and in table of uses. And I think that, you know, you may be covered if you were just to adopt amendments to the zoning to allow for food trucks um, in the schedule, in the table of uses, and then rely on the other regulations of the town to go through those permitting um, procedures. I think, though, there may be some questions with regards to if you were to be looking at um, other types of uses which may have food trucks, um, you know, would you be addressing the siding of a food truck as it relates to another use um, that you may, you know, be looking at. Um, let's say um, if you're, if, if there's an evolution of the public events bylaw or the, the, the public uh, venue. Yes. Um, you know, is there going to be an allowance of food trucks in there? Is that going to be allowed in that sp- particular district? Um, are you going to allow all food trucks in all districts? Um, so I think that there, I think that there's, you know, that's something to contemplate. Um, just some considerations that I'm thinking of at the top of my head. Yeah. Yes, we do have to address it, I think, because of events such as the Country in the Country, the Asparagus Festival, those all operate food trucks. So um, it's a, thank you for drawing that distinction. So hypothetically, if we had a planning board member that was going to get married this summer and was and was hiring a pizza truck to come park in his lawn and serve his guests would that fall into this that would be that would be considered a temporary food truck not a permanent food truck so we're talking two different things here mark yeah i'm talking about 
four hours and yeah and, i mean i would think that the what we're more trying to address i mean we're trying to address more of the so-called permanent food trucks as opposed to somebody that brings something in for the day right. or for the weekend for like a festival but um, maybe we should turn over to ben and ask how the board of health views your pizza truck Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Is that yeah, I I I'd say that that if that was to if I heard about that, uh, the answer to that is is always the question: is it something public or private? And the way that we usually fall into the definition of if something is public or private isn't necessarily whether it's on private property. For example, there could be a, a large concert in, uh, somewhere where that is a private, that's privately owned, but um, anyone can go there. And, and even though it's ticketed, it's a public event, right? Uh, so, you know, that's, that's the worst case example of a, of a privately owned establishment hosting a public event. However, getting back to your specific question, um, a, a wedding or a reception is nowhere, anywhere could it be considered public because it is you have to be invited you're not advertising right. for it you right. know everyone this is, all falls under private and so you could do whatever you want with a food truck in that type of uh, situation now it'd be different if you said i'm having a block party everyone is invited and i'm going to put an advertisement in the in the newspaper suddenly that becomes a public event and yes health would be involved in that case i'm just i know you're not you're not yeah. talking about that but i'm giving you the, yeah. the, the no. how this but very helpful. Like, like, like the pot festival proposed for the young men's club. I will not speak to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark lives on a short street and without a lot of parking, so he's going to have to invite everyone on the street to his <laughs> wedding. Uh, oh, does that include select board too? Oh boy. Or are you getting married this summer, Mark? Are you hinting around something? <laughs> it's coming my way. Second time around. Okay. Second time's a charm. Okay, good for you. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. When's a big day? No, don't say, don't forget it. Don't, don't answer that. You'll know you're when you get your invitation or not. <laughs> you're on TV. Don't answer that. <laughs> yeah, because then it becomes a public event. Yes, um, yes, don't answer that. Wasn't there a movie, <laughs> Wedding Crashers? Yeah. Well, I, I think now that we have some, um, one other thing was that we, for a while, the, we had no active participation from the Board of Health across all of these issues. So I, I guess a comparable example, uh, Ken, is something like the, um, when we allowed the, uh, um, campers by the river we created enabling language but then um a left left it up to administrative approval so no board is really overseeing it but the building inspectors is so this is sort of akin to that um we allow it uh create a system to permit it and then leave it up to board of health and others to deal with it yeah, the, the real issue i think on, on food trucks is board of health in all respects <clears throat> and the fire department for those that do actually do cooking on on board like mr jank says they have propane and ansel systems and so on and so forth and that's a whole different category of stuff okay i'm just gonna ask bruce i don't know how much bearing it has or not but from your experience, do most trucks have their own uh, compressors or whatever? They're not running the the engine to power their. And I know you can't speak for all, but I just I would imagine that would be wasteful to be idling for. Yeah, most most venues that have been doing festivals, like um, for example, we used to do a folk festival called Falcon Ridge. It was out on some guy's farm. Um, in New York, and they had um, power run under the ground to outlets, and trucks would plug into the outlets. It was it was a pretty nice setup. But most go to the daily events, like the um, let's say for the Asparagus Fest, for example. If a truck is there and it's cooking, it's typically running off a generator. Um, the Honda generators are relatively quiet. Getting back to your pizza um, thing, 
we do a lot of weddings, um, scoop a lot of wedding events. Um, it's important that you ask your food vendor to name you as an additional insured um, in case anything were to happen, whether it be food, illness related, or whether it be um, fire or whatever may happen or, or may not happen on site. Um, we always ask um, that everyone adds as an additional insured wherever we go um, so that you're you're carried, you're covered and your guests are covered. Hmm. That's just a side note. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Bruce. Where, yeah. where do you have your uh, truck permitted out of currently? We, we actually haven't used our um, food truck in quite some, uh, quite some time. Um, we used it once last year at Amherst College, but um, our truck is um, registered in Massachusetts and insured um, through our farm. <sighs> Okay. Yeah, most well, trucks that are I mean, I think preparing got... food have to give a um, a kitchen where they're where they're out of, and that would be, I guess, the the tie into that. We got some valuable information and direction on where we should be going with these particular items from forward. Yeah, yeah this has so, been very um, illuminating. And what's that, Mark? This has been very illuminating and kind of lets us know how much we don't know. Well, that's exactly correct. That we don't claim to know it all. That's why we're trying to learn, especially on yeah. the oddball items like this. Um, I mean, they need to be addressed, but it's hard to address them and not put undue burdens on various boards and the vendors themselves. We don't want to make them spin their wheels for nothing. We want to make it worthwhile and productive for whatever is going to be required. So good, thank you. And I just want to add, if it's not obvious, we're not trying to penalize anyone. We're trying to protect everyone. That is, yes. That's a good line. Like yep. that. <laughs> um, let's see. So it's not ready for prime time, Jim. That's what that you're saying. That is correct. Yeah. I do not see this as prime time yet. We need some more work. But if we don't start working on it, it'll never be ready for that prime time. So that's So do you think there's any point to maybe going through and doing the amendments to the table of uses without necessarily having the underlying, because it seems like the uh, Board of Health has some protocols in place. Uh, if someone comes to the Board of Health, you have checklists, you have regulatory authority to inspect food trucks. Do we need to have the structure that Jim's talking about in the general bylaw? My guess is probably not. I think I think you 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 hit it right there, but we we amend the table. We, we define a food truck, probably with a board of health inspect with the health inspector's input. We define where and how it's permitted, um, and the enforcement should be up to the appropriate, really going to come down to, well, in some cases, the building inspector, but for the most part, is going to be the health and the board of health and the fire department. And the definition would be food truck and or mobile food establishment, which would cover the tents. I guess we'd have to debate that. That, that's, that's what we got to try to decide how we're going to define it. You know, so we're, are we trying to address the, the one or two day food trucks or are we trying to address the food trucks that are going to be there on a semi-permanent basis? Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to be probably input from the board of health or the health inspector on what really needs to be defined, how to define it. Are they charged a fee if they're permanent by the town? A what? A fee. A fee. For inspecting? I think there. Prince <laughs> said $200. Yeah, it's, a, it's $200 this year. It was $100 last year. Okay. For the whole season? Yeah. Well, that's what it, that's what it is in most towns. I don't know if that's what it is in okay. the town. So in the town of Amherst, for example, you pay $50 um, for your first food permit and they come out and they inspect your truck. And then 
if it, like when we scoop at Amherst College, for example, we'll, we'll scoop once at Amherst College, we fill out all the information, they come and inspect the truck, <clears throat> certify it. And then if Amherst College calls again, we go back over, we contact the Board of Health and the Board of Health comes back out and inspects using the same permitted information that you filled out the first time, unless you've purchased a new truck or changed uh, menu items or something like that. And do you, the pay same. A, do you pay a separate fee for Northampton? It's $150 in Northampton. And if you want a seasonal pass, I'm sorry, it's $150 for a seasonal pass. And if you're doing one event, it's $100. We do the 150 because we do two events. So we say 50 bucks, I guess. Okay, so there's no inter changeability one one town certification doesn't carry over to another. no no you get we we have to fill out most most events that we do we have to fill out a uh, board of health form that says what your menu item is um you know it, whether you're bringing a truck whether you're bringing a, a trailer um what your setup is going to be and then um, they come out and inspect and you should have the items on your menu that you've said you were going to have um you know like we're going to say ice cream. We better not have a grill there with burgers. You know, it's not, <laughs> that's, that's what they're inspecting for. If we were to change um, menu items, um, let's say we went to look park and did one event. And then the next event, we wanted to bring a different truck. That's a whole different series of um, inspections for that process. So we, we just do the same thing. Local burger will, for example, local burger has a burger truck and then local burger has a, um, what they call a trailer that does barbecue and they do different events in the same city and they have to carry two different permits for both, uh, both trucks because it's different, you know, different menu items and, and different presentation and safety and that type of thing. But it really comes down to board health and fire department, like you say. You're right, Bruce. Uh, when you go to the big time football games, Florida, LSU, they have a trailer. Sure. The trailer is probably 15 feet long and they, it's a grill. Yeah. In one section, they have chops and one <laughs> ribs. And then one is hamburgs and hot dogs. And, yeah. uh, but these are for private parties. Yeah. So. It's amazing the amount of food that they can generate out of, out of a single food truck. Um, essentially the truck that sits in our yard is almost as wide and as long as our little scoop shop, um, as far as workable space. So it's kind of a, kind of a, a cool idea. Okay. Well, we can tinker with that. We have some work to be doing on this one. Okay. Anything else on this, particularly these topics, if not we'll move on to the next one. I do have one invoice to pay for the Daily Hampshire Gazette. Before we go yeah. on, we do have uh, the uh, oh the uh, Cattle Lodge conversion. Cattle Lodge. Yeah, we have the public hearing. The first uh, public hearing for the ZBA for the 40B uh, friendly friendly for the friendly 40B hearing was held um, last week with the ZBA and it was on YouTube. I didn't attend, but I watched the presentation on YouTube and a whole meeting last about two and a half hours, give or take. The next meeting has been scheduled for continued to March 20th at, I believe, six o'clock, Bill? Seven. Seven o'clock to continue the public hearing. They are asked for a whole bunch of information from various town boards and from the applicant, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not going to go into review of what's going on. Laura Baker is here from the applicant. And I think she wants to give us a quick overview of what is going on. Ms. Baker. Good evening. I mainly came to be at your disposal if there are questions that came up for me. Um, you know, I can tell you, having sat at the ZBA me meeting, that there is some uh, misinformation that was shared, and I could certainly present some corrections, but I'm a little bit more interested in what the planning board thinks and what its 
questions are. So I've come to this board at least once, maybe twice before, um, very early on prior to purchasing the Econo Lodge property, just to kind of get a sense of the board. Um, at that time, it seemed like the planning board was either tolerant or favorable in terms of this idea. And I am interested to know if I read that correctly. Some of the boards in town um, have taken votes and uh, sent letters of support. One board, uh, the Finance Committee, um, didn't vote to support or not support, but they did send um, kind of a list of questions and concerns that they have that they think the ZBA should consider. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of here at your at your disposal. I did uh, read the housing production plan um, that is going to be discussed further tomorrow at the senior center. And, you know, uh, to me, uh, there are lots of echoes. Um, it seems very consistent with what we're proposing in terms of providing um, some multifamily housing uh, in town. There hasn't been any multifamily housing built in town, as far as I can tell, in about 20 years um, and serving folks who are working in town or otherwise have limited income, including seniors in town. Um, I pulled together some quick data. The other thing that seemed to be um, shared quite a bit was the subsidized housing inventory. Um, and there are a lot of concerns that um, Hadley's was higher than surrounding towns. Um, I did pull that data for surrounding towns. Um, Hadley is a little bit lower than Amherst. At, Amherst is at 12.6%, Hadley 12.5%, Northampton 11.4%, Sunderland 10.7%. Um, and I would just note we have had friendly 40Bs also occur in other towns that have been over uh, 10%. Um, when I looked at the breakdown of Hadley's um, subsidized housing inventory, what I observe is there is substantially more um, housing being provided for seniors uh, than for, for non-seniors. Um, and I'm thinking that the East Street Commons, which is 55 and over, is also, you know, another form of senior housing. So I I counted up about 100 and almost 180 units of housing dedicated to seniors in um, Hadley. I counted up about 92 kind of general general public family subsidized housing in Hadley. Um, one of the comments that came up at the ZBA was how many seniors are in town. And I just would suggest that without a market study, it's hard to know if there are so many seniors in town because there's so much senior housing in town. Um, and really to it would take more digging to know whether there is market demand for additional senior housing from Hadley residents. Um, the housing production plan also pointed out that, and I confirm this with the census, 33%, no, 51% of renters in Hadley are cost burdened. So they're paying more than 30% of their income for housing. Um, another third of residents appear to be uh, living on very low incomes, which in our case, when we set up homeless preference units, that includes people who are paying, who are earning below 30% of, of area median income. And so they also become eligible for housing at the Econo Lodge. So we will present more information like this to the Zoning Board of Appeals and the general public, because it felt like people weren't really able to connect up the housing we were proposing with existing needs from existing Hadley residents. Um, and so that will be kind of a focus of our presentation, as well as talking about the methods um, and the ways that we screen tenants mm -hmm. so that we make sure we're not housing people who will pose a danger to our other tenants or to the community. Um, but again, I don't I don't really want to kind of spout information at you. I'm, I'm curious to hear what, what you're thinking and, and if you have questions for us. So, so I do have a question, and uh, maybe Ken has some input into this too. But my understanding is that the um, the ten percent safe harbor target is not statutory; it is administrative. That's something that's set through Department of Housing and Community Development. Yep. Uh, by regulation, presumably. I believe so. So with a governor that's gung-ho on more housing, sure, there's always the chance that the target can be reset. 
Yeah, and what, one comment that came out of the ZBA hearing is that unfortunately the subsidized housing inventory, which is compiled and published by the Department of Housing and Community Development, relies upon 2010 census data for the market rate units. And so that data would have been collected, I don't know, 2008, 2009. So at this point, it's very stale, whereas the subsidized housing data keeps getting updated because the towns proactively do that with, with DHCD. So it's not clear to us exactly what had these uh, percentages. I would also note that when we apply for funds from the Department of Housing Community Development, one of their housing priorities is uh, affordable housing in towns that are below 13% of the SHI. So there's nobody saying at the state level that 10% and you're done, it's enough. In fact, they're saying, we want to see you do more. Um, and some communities also see the benefit of, of going over that 10% threshold. Um, what it allows you to do in a 40B is reject a permit or approve a permit with conditions. And every 40B I've been involved with has taken that form. Um, I've never had a case where we go in and the zoning board says, yeah, just do it. <laughs> We always have pretty extensive hearings and discussions wherein the zoning board puts conditions on the project that we're proposing, sometimes many, many conditions. And so I always see it as a kind of negotiated process with a community. And I think that's where the term friendly comes from, is that if there's a mutual desire by the town bodies and the developer to come to agreement that we're not coming in and saying it has to be like this. Um, we're listening to what people are saying to us and we're willing to accept conditions. And we go back and forth on what those conditions might be. Thank you. Sure. So, I, we, uh, just I just one, one comment. Uh, many years ago, the three members on the planning board, I think all three of us remember the Mountain View Apartments, which was a friendly 40B. Unfriendly. Then, pardon? Unfriendly. No, it was a friendly 40B. The mountain, That was the one behind Pizza Hut. That was the, initially, Art Pichette presented it. It was a friendly 40B, and it showed this gorgeous, gorgeous drawing, rendering of what they were going to present. And we said, it looks fine. And then we got less than uh, what was shown. So there was some sleight of hand method. So some of us come with a jaundiced view sometimes about developers. Now, uh, you know, perhaps a bond would be in order to make sure that it's going to be done as planned. So we are open to any and all suggestions that might come. And I think that what the ZBA is doing with their, in, what their role is, is they're kind of the funnel. They reach out to all the other boards in town, boards kind of, send in questions, comments, concerns, that's the comprehensive part of the permit is that you're trying to get one body to collect all those comments and negotiate on behalf of the town, whatever conditions are wanted. If the fire chief wants a certain kind of alarm system, they can condition that. You know, if you want certain stormwater management practices, you can condition that. If the town, I know we've already had a number of discussions about local preference. If the town wants a local preference, people could ask the zoning board to have that conversation and to add it as a requirement in the permit. I was speaking um, to one member of the board. Uh, if you're looking for a straw vote, do we approve or not approve? I, I think we're willing to cooperate with the zoning board of appeals because the authority ultimately is in the ZBA's hands. So uh, if, if we want to make some kind of statement, I would say that we would cooperate with the Zoning Board of Appeals and it's their decision, not our decision. My, my impression is the Zoning Board is unfamiliar or has not had an experience like this. And so I think they would be really grateful for support from other boards um, because- oh, They're gonna have a quick learning curve, you know? <laughs> uh, we haven't been familiar with a lot of things that have come before us and we've uh, handled it. I think uh, the ZBA might want to, you know, get after well, you, it. You can tell them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I just think the planning board in particular, if I was on the zoning board, I would care 
what yeah, the I don't think, planning I don't, board thinks. I, I don't think we're in a position to coach other boards what to do. No, if but if they are, want to hear our opinions, we can offer them. Or advice questions. or questions. My any, opinion, any of the above. Yeah, my opinion. opinion you comment, Ken. My opinion is something this significant of a change for town Hadley should go before town meeting and have the population or the voters vote vote on it. I mean, we 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 tried to we tried to bring a new uh, fifty five older district uh, to town meeting two years ago, and they voted against us. The people spoke, you know. Yeah. Um, I was going to just add for the board. I when I was town planner in the town of Southbridge, we went through a forty B uh, comprehensive permit. And um, it wasn't a friendly 40B. Um, it was just a 40B project that had come before the town. And um, we were under the 10% subsidized housing inventory. And like uh, Ms. Baker su suggested, a lot of those conversations were happening at the ZBA level. And as the board has identified, the ZBA had a large learning curve um, on how to act as a, an agent for the town um, understanding that there were some concerns that were brought by the planning board, as well as other town department heads. Um, I don't know if the town is currently utilizing services where um, a housing friendly um, type of agency like the Mass Housing Partnership um, served as a consultant for us um, to oversee the permitting process. And it's likely if um, the town is, you know, utilizing that, or the ZBA is utilizing that. That could be very helpful to kind of navigate the process and have those conversations with the developer. Um, so th I'm just, you know, sharing that particular experience. But, um, you know, in the in that in that experience, the planning board did have um, some comments um, that were shared as a matter of public record for the ZBA for considerations, particular to. Um, you know, size of the the particular driveway, and had comments regarding parking um, and safety issues. So, um, you know, I'm just I'm just sharing that as some additional comment. We actively a town council <clears throat> is actively participating. We don't have a consultant per se, but town council was at the meeting, <clears throat> had previously done a training for the board on the process. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and uh, is very familiar with the 40B process. So um, I think that part is going well. Yeah, I, think, um, I think if the coaching comes, you're right, Bill, it should come from town council. The um, Unlike other projects, um, unlike the more typical 40B, actually the planning board has already done site plan approval for this site when it was uh, built as a hotel. So um, it really doesn't have a lot of the issues that a let's build a, an apartment house would present. Well, but Bill is bringing up a good point that somebody is keeping this on the wraps, but there's a proposal for another 40B that is going to go on the bad property, which is uh, North Maple Street and Rocky Hill Road, where there's some farmland there. So I think we've been prompt. Uh, we, we, it's been intimated that that will uh, appear at our next meeting. Who, who said that? Tom Reedy. Oh, okay. But uh, uh, some who, who some who town is? some town people already know about it, and uh, it, it was kind of withheld, and they knew at at the presentation of this. Uh, Econo Lodge 40B hearing and was not even mentioned. So, so, so not, they it, want us to, co you want us to coach them, but they don't tell us what's going on in there. Well, exactly right. Yeah. Part, 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 part of another 40B. <laughs> I can part, tell you. Part that. of the issue with another 40B is somebody's got it in their head, but until it's actually been presented, it's truly just hearsay, Joe. Right. You know, and and I, I know that they, they're, they're talking about it. However, Talk is cheap. You know, they're saying what we want. No, to, but the people, want Jim, to anybody can talk about it. But certain members of uh, 
the most prominent board in town know, knew that it was coming in. But that's really not relevant to this project. That's right. This yeah. stands on its own, I think. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll see. It, it's not relevant only because nobody has applied. Nobody, they, they're talking about it, and that's exactly what it is. They're taught. So yeah. until somebody comes forward with a real plan, if you would, and you know, it, it, it's like you, you what if they trying to put the, the, the fear of God in us or something? No. No, that maybe go. plan B will be better than plan A, or well, who knows? So until it comes forward, I to agree. me it's I, hearsay. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I hate this, I hate to use that term, but that's all I can say. Yeah. Because nobody's seen anything, so uh, you know the, this stands on its own merits. Uh, yes. It it's a site that we have looked at already. It's a developed site. Um, again, my, I'm inclined to favor it because um, I <clears throat> like to keep an eye on that on that target figure and stay ahead of it, and mindful that it could change and put us on the wrong side of the curve. Um, look at the uh, MB8 communities that were told that they uh, had to uh, zone for at least two family by right within a certain radius of an MBTA station. Um, the, the framework can change. And there's, getting, there's pushback on that, but the fact is the framework can change. So uh, this seems like a simple enough way to stay ahead of the curve. It's a site that's already existing. Uh, we know exactly what it's going to look like. Um, and um, honestly, I think having staff there to screen tenants, um, it was not free of problems, as I understand it, under the uh, prior management as a hotel where the entry criteria was whether your credit card cleared. That's um, most hotels, isn't it? <laughs> it? It is. It yeah, is. So that, that's not know, cool. <laughs> people talk about it it will bring problems as if we didn't have problems already. Oh exactly. It's, it's if you want drugs, they're in Hadley right now. This isn't going to bring any more drugs. The you problem know, is I mean, provide a, a venue for drug dealing. Uh, I, I'm I'm inclined room, to agree room three, with room three, the room three. he said. I haven't got it. <laughs> I'm inclined to agree with Bill for the reasons he well, said. Well, I don't think we should tip our hand because we're that's not, we're not tipping our hand. Joe. That makes Joe, a negotiation. Joe, Joe can, I, can we each speak? Then you have a chance. Thank you. Like I said, for the reasons Bill has said, I'm kind of inclined to agree. However. There's some more conditions need to be applied um, because as this as the plan is presented, like Ms. Baker said, it's room for negotiation. And I don't want to be here and try to negotiate because that's not our job. Our job is to kind of get an idea. I intend to go to the next zoning board hearing and put my two cents in on conditions that I think should be requested of the ZBA and see if they can negotiate them with the developer. So, um, you know, that, that, that's where I stand right now. I'm not saying I'm 100% again. I'm not saying I'm against it. It's like I'm leaning towards approval. I like it. And, but it needs some conditions, some additional I, conditions. I, I was taken back by basically we're paying, going to be putting a, uh, an inventory of low-income workers to work for low-income paying jobs at the mall. Uh, is that that's the argument? They need workers, so we're going to fill this place up with people that are going to work at low-income jobs. It's almost insulting. I think that's just one scenario that there might be people that are commuting from further away, and it would be easier for them to live there. That we can't. I don't think there's anyone has a crystal ball. That's just one scenario that. Well, that yeah. some people might embrace it. That I wasn't that, finished. That rubbed you wrong. No. Yeah. Um, there's no statistics. You you said you don't know if people are going to go to work at the mall. You don't know how many people travel long distances. It's just I, I think that the fact that you brought that argument up 
is is fallacious. You don't know. I'd like to have some, see some numbers as to how many people that are commuting to the mall would move to, to this facility. I think that's important. I don't or think anyone's going to be, or just, or is it just going to be people that are going to get a break on rent and not work? I prefer people that are going to work for a living and do, do something, you know? So I would just comment that, you know, Hadley's tax base, which I've heard a lot of discussion about, you know, the kind of the backbone yeah. of it being that Route 9 corridor, those businesses can only thrive if they have workers. And I see a lot of help wanted signs up when they were trying to reopen the O'Connell Lodge after the pandemic, the barrier to reopening it was they couldn't hire people. And so when there's a situation where there are low wage jobs by the nature of these service industries, and people also have to add the cost of commuting from a, another area because they can't afford to live in the town where the jobs are, that doesn't seem like a great win for the businesses or for the employees who are well, there. According to my back of the envelope count, we've got about 20 businesses on Route 9 whose stock trades on the New York Stock Exchange. Just a point of reference. So I'm wondering if, 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 as we go through this, I, I see a lot of help wanted ads and more and more I'm seeing the starting wage listed in the, uh, you know, right in the front window of the store and it's up. going up and up. So yep. when you talk about, you know, it's not people who are getting hired at minimum wage or sub minimum no, it's wage. Not. Uh, it's the, uh, work. Right. The, the jobs at the mall are not as low paying as they might have been once upon a time. Mark Dunn. Well, listen, when this- If I can place, speak before Mike, Mike, Michael, will you yield the- Sure will, sure will. Thank you, sir. And I'll, I'll welcome your response after I speak. Got it, got it. Let everyone get a chance. I, one of the things that I heard one of the members say was taking umbrance with a, a scenario of who's gonna move in there. We don't know who's gonna move in there because it's a lottery. It could be every grandmother and grandfather who wants to downsize in Hadley wins the lottery and gets to go there because they've been complaining they don't have a place they can't afford to stay in Hadley. So I, I don't think we're we're voting on or we're we're sending advice on what who's going to be in there. We don't know. That's a lottery. Yeah, Laura told us is going to be moving in there people that have a commute a long distance and they want to live closer to their point of work she told I think us that's that's a so scenario. we've been asked kind of what are the benefits to the town what are the potential benefits to the town and i would list that among them that having places where people who are already working in your town can afford to live in your town is a benefit for your businesses the, the other question i have is parking you said these Poor workers aren't going to be able to afford a car, so you're not going to have to have a lot of parking. I disagree with that. Anybody can afford a car. So I, we have 70. <laughs> there are 70 paved spaces and 57 unpaved spaces. There's 127 potential spaces on that lot for 50 apartments. Okay, that's good. That's a lot of, a par that's right. a lot of parking. Okay. You can point. come and park there, too. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have extra. <laughs> well. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Thank you for coming. You're eloquent. Yeah. Thank you. So do we want to, Jim, you said you had some, you, you thought there were some conditions you'd like to see. Do we want to put this onto the next agenda perhaps and talk about whether we want to recommend conditions to the uh, ZBA? Well, the, the thing is, I mean, I, I don't know how to quite address this of negotiations because I don't want to I don't want to tell Ms. Baker what conditions we want to see before I have a chance to mention them to the ZBA or anybody else that has ideas. I don't want to, I, you know, it, it's like 
It's like trying to negotiate a contract and letting somebody know a heads up what's going to be coming. But I, think I don't some, think that's appropriate. To some degree, there, the ZBA is asking us what we think. That asking us what we think versus what we would like to see for conditions, I think, are two different things. And I intend to go to the next ZBA hearing and say, my conditions is these are what I would like to see as a planning board member, not coming as a vote of the planning board. But I, I, I'm also undecided as to whether that's appropriate. Yeah, that's what I, I was kind of imagining that I would come up with my own comments, suggestions and offer them as a member of their, you know, as an attendee of their meeting who happens to be from the planning board. But I don't, um, again, this is my first time through a 40B. Well, this is the first time we've had a 40, 40B where we've had somebody that's cooperating with us as opposed to telling us what's going to happen too. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's a different scenario for all of us, even though some of us have at least seen a 40B go through prior where we saw the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. And the notion that this is somehow going to bring drugs to town, is, there are already drugs here, and they're hard drugs, and they're killing people. They killed a guy from North Hadley. Somebody was living at the Amherst Motel work that I know that worked at uh, uh, Dollar Tree and she got paid, got on a bus, went to Northampton, bought some whatever it was that killed her and they found her in uh, Starbucks. So it's here. It's here. I, I just think that's, you know, creating fear out of. Exactly. I think so. Too. Air. It does the be board, bringing, does it the rest be bringing the Russians thing? and Chinese and Martians too, yeah. you know. Exactly. Does the rest of the board think we should tip our hand and say conditions that we would like to see? I don't necessarily see that it's tipping our hand, I guess. Okay. That, um, if we'd like to see a local preference lottery, the fact that we would recommend that I don't think is tipping our hand. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's been mentioned several times. Okay. Um, there aren't a lot of suggestions to make on the stuff we usually look at because we've already approved it right. as a structure. Um, but I, I do feel that the ZBA may feel, the ZBA definitely feels like it's in over its head. Oh, and I bet, yes. They have not had the fun of uh, a cafeteria full of people who don't like Walmart. <laughs> uh, so uh <laughs> and and some of you young'uns haven't either yeah but um you know we, we we've certainly dealt with meetings that we have to move to the cafeteria because of the size of the crowd that is there with the flaming pitchforks flaming <laughs> torches and pitchforks in the back um the uh development on the mountain uh, proposed subdivision on um, uh, on the mountain comes to mind too. Um, I so they, they feel they're definitely I asking for help okay. and help in the form of suggestions that you know don't forget to ask for this. And some of it, I mean, I don't know exactly what to say because we don't usually get involved with the inside operations of a business either. Right. Um, but apart from asking for local preference and asking you know, whether what your snow removal plan is going to be. Um, and, uh, you know, we can't ask you to put a crosswalk in because Route 9 belongs to the state. Um, I, sky, I, sky bridge. But <laughs> what we, what, okay, okay. So then we should probably talk about what we would like to see based on what we have seen as some of the pitfalls of some of the other uh, developments, multifamily housings that we've got. One of them is, okay, if we're going to do that, I would like to see this to be um, affordable housing in perpetuity. Not for a term of 99 years or anything like that, but in perpetuity so that it'll never expire. And what about for people that are 55 and over? Clearly, 
Massachusetts has an aging population and it's only going to get worse. Younger people are skedaddling out. Funny, funny you both should mention that. If you read the Sunland uh, affordable housing, the friendly 40B, that uh, they mentioned 60 and older and they mentioned in perpetuity. Yeah. No. So note, note for the future, if you want to talk about a friendly 40B for senior housing, um, that, um, that would be good too. North Maple or here? You're saying. <laughs> so can I throw out you know, a little tidbit of information? I dying, but I had a friend who was elderly, older. I knew him uh, from Amherst and uh, he got kicked out of uh, Ann Whalen and uh, they found him dead in his car. This is 15 years ago. You know, he was 60, 65 years old, 66. Right. So I, we've been in conversation with the Council on Aging and Hadley because they're concerned about the housing for their folks. So I took a look at our existing portfolio of rental housing. Um, and I looked at the, all the studios and one bedrooms, the kind of smaller sized units, which is what we're proposing at Econa Lodge. And even though we don't have a senior housing restriction or preference on those units, 42% of them are occupied by people who are 55 and over. So there's no question that we are going to get and have folks living, if we're permitted, at the Econo Lodge who are seniors. It's, it's an obvious, to me, obvious match because of the convenience of the location, um, the small size of the apartments, the affordability for someone on a fixed income and the fact that the building is, it's fully handicapped accessible. And so, you know, it's come in on grade, use an elevator. We have four fully wheelchair accessible apartments and then all the rest of the apartments are adaptable. So there's a nice mesh um, with older persons who want to live at this location. Not everybody will, I mean, no one housing development is going to serve all the needs. Um, but I think this is already kind of a good match for people who are low income and who are seniors. Well, you know, maybe some younger guy can help granny across the street, you know. Do we know where you're going to be in uh, uh, Florida anyways, Mike? What? <laughs> you're going to be in Florida. I'm, I'm Florida there right now. now. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm here <laughs> across the street right now. We'll save you a unit, Mike. <laughs> Laura, do you know where the nearest bus stop is to that location? Like for PBTA? I do. I do. So it is right basically on the corner of the property. So as you head toward the, the entry to the Hampshire Mall, which is right to the left of this property, that's the bus pickup location when you're going toward Northampton, the one when you're going the other way is across, almost directly across the street, you know, a little bit toward Amherst, but there's a bus shelter there. So you've probably yeah. seen that one. The eastbound um, one is in the Y. Uh, yeah, the eastbound one is in the Y of yeah. the um, uh, the Whole Foods entrance to the mall. I mean, uh, it's it's one of our favorite things about the location is, is just the bus stops are right there. And what I understand is the most frequently traveled bus route for PVTA, Ken, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is this road, the kind of Northampton to Amherst Route 9 run. So there's a lot of opportunity to catch a bus at this location. Yeah, you'll, hear, you'll, hear the, you'll hear the term B43. That is the bus that travels back and forth on that route. And it's it's it has a lot of tra lot of uh, a lot of buses and a lot of travelers, and a lot of congestion, likewise, especially with Route 9 right now, but that's beside the point. Yeah, I think they're like every 20 minutes, maybe. Yeah, so... PVPA, PVPA bus two weeks ago, first time ever. And it was a really good experience. I picked it up in front of the uh, uh, post office in Northampton, and I took it to basically in front of the post office in Hadley. Yeah. So we, we've been asked not to stir up another pot, but we would be happy if the town wants to host an electric bike station, the Valley Bike Share Station, we would be very happy if we end up doing this um, development to do it at this location. Um, I think it's a good site for it. And, um, you know, the other thing we really like is how close it is to the bike trail. 
um, for those people who want to travel about using a bike. Can you lose use electric bikes on the bike trail? No. That's a great question. I don't know the answer. I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. More, uh, the electric bike fall into a great area because there's specifically no motorized vehicles on the bike trail. Mm -hmm. There's signs all over the place. So I don't know if electric bikes are permitted or not for that reason. Okay. Well, I don't want to distract us, but I'm yeah, just well, saying. That's, that's, that's near the here or there. Any, right. the, okay. You, you got, you got three different things that the planning board has bill myself and uh, has been said about local preference, affordable housing in perpetuity, a percentage dedicated for seniors for preference. Is there anything else we're thinking? Well, Sutherland also added the, the uh, capability in, I spoke to one of the selectmen there, that this company would do all the interviewing and all the record keeping necessary for the state and any other government entities. The reason for that is because sometimes people would try to favor a local person and they would kind of fudge the numbers a little bit. We don't want to get involved in that. And they said, like the ambulance, well, that's a good person. They shouldn't have to pay the ambulance fee. That was his example. So huh. this, this company should have the authority to, uh, to do all the interviewing as well as uh, keep the numbers necessary for the state. So I, I was the project manager for the Sanderson place in, in yeah, Sunderland. I, I, I know so you. I negotiated all of the meetings with the ZBA. Um, and I can certainly supply a copy of the uh, permit decision more, more appropriately to the ZBA themselves. But because a lot of times that's how these decisions get written. You look at what other towns have done and you pick up language. Um, we did a 40B recently in Amherst, and I think we probably have a hundred, at least a hundred conditions in that, in that uh, permit. So that would be helpful if you could uh, just send um send the, the couple of those over to uh, the planning at Hadley MA and uh, I share it with the rest of the board so we have a sense of what conditions look like yeah and yeah. not just talking yeah. about it in the abstract yeah. Of, right yeah I mean in both those cases they were newly developed properties and so what you'll see is a lot of the conditions are about physical development of the site mm -hmm. um, and so we're not proposing to really change the site plan at the Kana Lodge. So it's in some ways it's much simpler. And in those cases, we asked for multiple variances. Um, in this case, we're only asking for one variance, which is the use, the type of use. Obviously the uh, hotel sign would come down. So the hotel sign, um, there were four signs, I believe on the kind of uh, bell tower area, those are off. And then they painted over the front sign. Um, and we don't have any plans for the signage. What we said in our application is that we would either just preserve the sign or or reduce it. I don't think it's really, I think it's oversized for a residential place. We probably just want to have the street number there. Talk to your attorney about what you're asking for, because I think you're looking at two variances. Okay. One for more than uh, one uh, dwelling per lot and one for residential use in the industrial district. I, I agree with Bill that this would get us ahead of the curve substantially. Uh, and also, it's going to be done in Hadley. This is probably the best place to do it, Route 9. Route 9's changed forever. I remember when you had a place called Maz Rendezvous there. And that was about it. <laughs> well, in, in a way, this is kind of retro because I've been watching you know, over the years, I've been watching residential, uh, the single family homes uh, along Route 9 being converted to business one by one. So it's kind of yeah. retro to be putting really? housing back on Route 9. 
And by the way, Flash, Hopkins lost 69-65 to Roxbury. Oh, oh, that's too bad. Oh, well. Uh, I was sad when the hot dog shack turned into a full-blown restaurant. That was... <laughs> You get a good hot dog, I'll find it. <laughs> Nick's nest. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So our approach with communities, and it's the reason I've been before you a couple of times, is lots of talking. Uh, we do want to hear your wish list. We are we are trying to accommodate as best we can um, all of the desires that the town may have. Okay. How far back does that property go? Isn't there like a like a wetland gully back behind there? There is. Is that the malls or is that yours or somewhere in between? Or? Uh, most of it is on our property. So behind the Akana Lodge lot is more than three acres. It's a good sized lot. So behind it are those self-storage units that actually uh, predate the construction of the Akana Lodge, which was built in 2003. I don't know when these storage units were built. The, the, I think it's Hadley Easy Storage. So there's two rows of those. And then behind that is what looks like a diverted, I don't know if it started as a stormwater you know, drain um, and then became a wetland, but at this point it is a wetland um, with a protected status. Your, um, the storage was built as part of the approval of the Econo Lodge. We approved the Econo Lodge with storage. It was already there though. Those uh, buildings were already there as yeah, part they, of the think, hotel that was there before. Might have built them. Like that was phase one was the storage and phase two was the hotel. There was another, Kurt Shumway tells me there was another hotel, a smaller hotel on the side of the Econo Lodge that had the self storage. They raised that smaller hotel and built the Econo Lodge. That's correct. So we're going to have a vote on something here. Um, I don't think we necessarily. We are going to let's see. When's the next meet? Oh, the twentieth. Uh, so it's just the day. Um, it, we could. <laughs> I'll make a motion to suggest to the ZBA that um, they request a local preference, a senior preference. Affordable in perpetuity, and um, uh, that those those four. Second. Okay. Um. Any so discussion? I should, yeah, I should disclose that I'm also a member of the diversity committee, and we proposed a as low as possible local preference because their because their mission is to promote diversity in the town. So and I personally went back and forth and kind of abstained from that vote because I know that if I were someone who grew up here in town and now my kids were gone and I wanted to downsize and I couldn't afford to stay, that I would like to have an option. So I I support a local preference, but it also, uh, you know, if we had 50 Hadley elders that all took those units, we it would not help our uh, town's diversity. So I'm going to mm -hmm. just, I've said my piece on the, you know, six, one, half a dozen of another. Mike, every time. Yeah, I just quick question. If if um have you ever had where the fire department requested a donation put away towards like the future fire truck, or is that even allowed? Just a just a idea. Any any requests are allowed. We've never had that request before. Do we need it's a it's happened in Hadley a couple of times. And to me, it smells of mm. Doesn't smell good. It's like legalized bribery. <laughs> right. We'll bribe you with heavy equipment. <laughs> uh, well, we we voted for uh, when the uh, Pyramid Mall was going to add second stories on to a second story on the theaters, and they promised 
that they would uh, pay half of a fire truck if that happened. Well, the firemen were so thrilled, they put it right before the town meeting and we voted for the fire truck. And guess what? The second story was never built. So we had to pay for the whole fire truck. So, so, the, the, ration, so the rationale was a little more complicated. It wasn't a bribe. It uh, wasn't a legal <laughs> bribe so much. It was that the new second story structure, because it was going to be on top of the cinema, to was going to be trucks. beyond the reach of our current ladder truck. So we needed to have the bigger ladder truck to, to serve that property. And um, and then they decided not to follow through. And we jumped the gun. And how about the uh, Lowe's, the Woodchuck uh, Trust Fund to, to well, have? Well, at least we got the money on that one. Yeah. <laughs> but, but again, it was... But it, it, but was, it bought it off was, the opposition it, that was against it, Lowe's. It goes back to your legal bribe scenario. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. So we, so so we have a vote. To I think I think Mike seconded it, correct? Yes. yes. We have a motion and a second to recommend to the ZBA to suggest the local preference, the affordable perpetuity, percent of senior preference, and a developer is responsible for all vetting, interviewing, and record keeping. Any I, other comments? I, mean, I, I think that's telling. I was looking more for a wording of cooperate. If they ask for our our guidance. They, they have. Give it. They, they, I they haven't have. heard it. I haven't heard it. So that's, if that's why they sent the, they sent the package around to everybody. They are asking for guidance. Yes. That's part of the statutory process. To the ZBA s sends that out for input from boards. Well, can can we comfortably word it so that we're not dictating it in some yeah. Uh, yeah. an English major rather than a biochemistry major would say? Mm -hmm. Recommend motion right. to motion to the uh, to the ZBA to suggest that they re request per, request these things. Motion to, to recommend to ZBA that they request. These conditions. Three guys came to all planning board members. Yeah, we are recommending these conditions. To you the know they're board. recording this, don't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> Unknown for my ice cream finish. Okay. okay. Are you Duly including noted. the administrative, administrative uh, interviewing? Yeah, developer vets and, rec and record keeps. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion in passes. In favor of developing. Pardon? All in favor of developing, you said? No, the all recommend. in favor of the motion. Of the motion. Okay, yes. I'm sorry. I vote aye. All, any no any nays i was gonna say nay just because we're all always a rubber stamp but no i'll 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 vote yes so are you but saying nay? nay i've done it before it'll make you you know stand are you out. saying nay or abstain mark i am not the horse i am saying yes I'm you're not abstaining no i'm saying yes i'm supporting you're it. saying yes it's unanimous it's unanimous. Okay. I'm just poking fun at us for being unanimous. Mark, it's it's like your meter's up, Mark. You're just yeah. like <laughs> you 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 weren't here for five cobs of zinc. We were not unanimous on unanimous on that no. one. Okay. <laughs> and okay. Laura, I just want to say you, okay. you're doing God's work. You know that. Yeah. Thank you so much. You really, you really are. You I really appreciate are. that. I appreciate you know, that very much. Some some of us don't realize what when God in human form is is right before us. Yeah. Well, and I could say it's been a pleasure to work with all the different boards and personnel in Hadley. So right back at you folks. Okay. Hey. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Motion passes, obviously. Yes. Like and thank said. you to unanimously. Alexis there 
<laughs> Poor Alexis, <laughs> hanging in. <laughs> okay. Your moral support. <laughs> That's right. The big guns were not needed. <laughs> there she. All right. The only other item I have is to pay the uh, Daily Hampshire Gazette three hundred ninety-three dollars and ninety-two cents for the legal ad for the two cannabis. <sighs> <laughs> I'll second his motion. Uh, motion. Okay. Second. Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. No. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> Are you voting no? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I was kidding. I was making a joke. Yes. Okay. Trying to. <laughs> You're confusing the heck out of me. It's not easy. Yeah. It's easy tonight. <laughs> okay. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anything else? Good thing I we have don't have AI taking minutes. It would be very confused by sarcasm. I have nothing else. Oh, uh, yes, I do. We're having a uh, meeting, uh, Zoom meeting Friday morning to discuss a potential shared position. Uh, that would provide uh, clerical and administrative support to the planning board, to the ZBA, and to the Conservation Commission. I'm not quite sure how many people are on that call. I think Jim and I yeah. are, and uh, somebody from Conservation. Um, so th there's something, uh, the, the current conservation agent uh, has moved on to a job elsewhere, Shyla, um, a full-time job elsewhere. Um, and th there's a concerted effort to get a, to cobble together a full-time position covering multiple related departments. Right. Um, so that uh, it, it would be a little more coordination um, and we'll see how that plays out. Uh, as you know, uh, as you may know, you may not know, Conservation Commission really seems to be a little at sea at the moment um, without, without staff to uh, support their, uh, their work. Okay. I have, anybody else have anything? Does the building commissioner have every, anything? No, you're all set? All set, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Good meeting. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.